All right, I lied. We're going to take a look at one more. And this guy's name is Steve. Hopefully this doesn't confuse you. Steve sent two videos. Steve's coach, I should say, sent two videos. There goes George running around. Um, but the problem here is one of them was uh, kind of vertical, and the other one was this horizontal kind of thing. So we're going to take a look, and uh, it's two separate throws. One is just a vertical shot from the back, and the other one was a horizontal shot from uh, the side. So hopefully this doesn't confuse you guys too much. But we're going to take a look at this guy right here, whose name is Steve. And we're going to see kind of a few things that we've already touched on in other videos. And the first thing I want to mention is that Steve needs a pair of throwing shoes. He's a junior. He's throwing pretty well, but he needs some throwing shoes because these big, bulky, heavy, very not flexible, high-top basketball shoes ain't going to cut it, man. Let's get some throwing shoes. All right, so first things first, let's watch Steve. So Steve, we got to get that right foot off the ground earlier. Let's get the right foot off the ground here. Because what's happening is the right foot's coming off the ground here. And he's in this kind of ballet position, this kind of crisscross ballet position that you're going to get a much better view of from the side shot that's uh, hiding behind this video. And when Steve goes through, he does a good job getting around his left. You can see he gets around his left side. And it's a much more of that linear pizza slice kind of drive. So he doesn't really trace the outline of the circle. He's running down the middle, which is exactly what I like to see. And then as he comes around, we see our first big issue is that his right foot, probably because he doesn't have throwing shoes, uh, also probably because he's just really not focusing on it, is that this right foot points toward the back of the circle and stops. And you can see here how long it takes. Once the right foot stops, how long it takes for him to turn that right foot again. So his right foot is dead in the water at this point. It's not moving. This is like an ACL injury waiting to happen. His left foot touches down there. His right foot still hasn't moved. And now that his left foot has touched down, he starts to move the right foot. And you can see it's just too little too late. And also we're in a really bad uh, heel-toe position. He's blocking himself off and does a, what a lot of really good athletes do at this point, which is he jumps off the ground. See how he picks the right foot up off the ground? He jumps off the ground in an effort to get his discus to fly down the middle and get his hips down the middle. Like that. So let's take a look at the other one. The side view, this is what I want to see. So side view, let's take a look. I'm getting ready to throw. Let's get this out of the way here. Beep, beep, beep. Come on now. There we go. It's getting ready to throw. You can start to see here the same issues. This is a different throw, mind you, but you're going to see a lot of the same issues. So he's got his foot off the ground a little bit too late. Let's see how he's got that crisscross ballet position. He does a good job, again, getting around his left side, but because his foot came off the ground so late, he's losing separation. And now the discus is kind of even with the hips. If he were to keep the discus back a little bit further, relax a little bit more in the back of the circle, and get this right foot off the ground earlier, he's going to be running ahead of the discus, and the discus is going to be trailing behind him rather than what's happening here. Okay, now here comes the drive down the middle. Okay, we're going to get that chest up a little bit, and now we start to see from the side that not only is he kind of going to be landing with the foot facing 12 o'clock on a flat foot, but he's also not getting deep enough into the front half of that circle. So there we go. The foot now is facing 12 o'clock. The right foot faces 12 o'clock and stops moving. It does not rotate. Now the right heel is going to drop down to the ground, making it impossible 
for the right foot to rotate. So you can't pivot on a flat foot, especially not in basketball shoes. So you can see here, we're back to having pretty decent separation again. See how he's not turning that right foot? That right foot is still facing 12 o'clock and it's still flat. And here comes the bad heel toe position. Left toe is on the ground right here. He still has not turned the foot. He still has not gotten aggressive with pushing the right toe and the right knee and the right hip toward the camera so that it can eventually go down the middle. And we'll see right here is where he starts to turn the right foot. But again, too little, too late. He's blocked himself off with that bad uh, heel-toe position. And then he has to jump off the ground and crank his neck all the way to the left so that he can get his hips down the middle and throw. So let's look at how long. That's where it is just about to leave the hand. One, two, three, four. 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, about 24 or so frames of this video where he has not been able to apply any power. You can't apply any power when you're off the ground and you can't apply any power when your toe is dragging on the ground. So right there to about right here, he does not put any more acceleration or force on that discus because his right foot is off the ground. Now, it sounds like a lot. It sounds like I'm telling you to do a lot of stuff, but what I'm doing in this video is I'm illustrating the point that a lot of different issues and a lot of different problems usually come from the same root, usually come from the same reason or the same issue. The issue in this case with Steve is that he's not landing on the ball of his right foot and he's not getting active and turning the right foot in the middle of the circle. So once he lands on the right toe, he needs to first of all land in the front half of the circle. He needs to land on the right toe and not put his heel down. And as soon as that right toe touches down in the middle of the circle, he's got to start to turn that right foot. Now if all of that stuff happens, what's, what's, what's going to happen? Well, if he lands in the front half of the circle, he's going to have his foot underneath him so he's going to be able to drive and accelerate into his release a lot better if he pivots on the right toe he's going to have a better opportunity to get this left toe in a better spot so that he's not blocking himself off uh, the same thing too is if he does get the right foot underneath him starts turning the right foot and getting active with the right foot it's going to do a much better job of keeping his weight behind him. Think of it like a seesaw. If you move the foot in, he's going to have more weight back. It's just the way it has to work. Foot goes in more, his upper body will automatically be behind the right foot. So that's what we're really trying to do in these videos here is to illustrate the point that a lot of times you can have you know, upwards of like 15, maybe even 20 different bad results from one mistake or from one correction. So a lot of times you've got the guys who, you know, oh, I'm throwing a lot of right sector files. Okay, you're not turning the right foot. Oh, my knee hurts. Okay, you're not turning the right foot. My weight is shifting too early. Okay, you're not turning the right foot. I'm not getting in a good heel toe position. Okay, you're not turning the right foot. Um, I'm opening up too early. You're not turning the right foot. So a lot of different issues can stem from the same problem. So that's really two big things that I want you to work on are going to be getting his right foot off the ground earlier in the back of the circle. Okay, That's going to fix the issues in the back. So get the right foot off the ground 
here instead of here. See that? That's going to solve a lot of issues. Let's have Steve drive to the front half of the circle. That's issue number two. And then let's have him land on the ball of his right foot and actively turn that right foot when he lands to prevent a lot of the release issues and a lot of the stuff that's going on at the front of the circle. All right, so hopefully this makes sense. This is my last one of the day. I've been getting a lot of emails in. This was just one that had, again, some different problems than we've seen before. Some similar problems that are resulting in different issues. So trying to really illustrate a lot of different throwers, a lot of different techniques, a lot of different mistakes to help those of you out there watching these videos to really um, you know, continue to learn more about your own throws and kind of be able to self-coach and self-teach um, a little bit better. All right, so good stuff, my man. Good luck with the rest of your season. And if anything pops up, shoot me an email. Let me know.